as promised from our prior video on how to make your car shine, shine, shine. We are going to deal with these pits, stone chips. This is the other fender on the opposite side of the truck. This is a couple of day process, which means got to have a little bit of patience. You can't just do it. If you did this on a Friday, you could take care of it on Sunday. So if you're getting this video here and you haven't seen the prior one, you'll want to watch that one to be able to take care of this right here as well. Now what we're going to do first off with these, clean them. And as you know, I am a huge fan of keeping things clean. Rubbing alcohol. And it doesn't hurt your paint. We have a pre-mixed paint right here that we're going to be using, which is, this is a Patriot Blue. There's the color right there. It's a metallic blue. The key part to this is getting a paint that will match. That's your job to get that. I can't help you with that. You can get your paint coat off the door of your vehicle, take it into your auto body store, they'll get you a paint match to it or paint stick or whatever it is you've got to do to get the matching paint. Now cleaning each individual stone chip with lacquer thinner. This is what will guarantee the bond of the paint. You've got to do this. It will not bond if you don't. And I let that air dry. As you can see, it's air drying. I'm not going to touch it with a towel. This will guarantee that you'll have a bond with the paint and the chipped area. Now I like to use paint brushes and they work real well to fill the chip and have it a little bit higher than the original paint because you're going to let it dry and this is where the patience comes in. At least two days. Now all I'm going to do with my paint here, now that I've cleaned them and you don't want to touch it again, all I do is touch it on here. Don't need much. Then I take my little paintbrush and I pull up that and I'll touch this one. See, I'm leaving it bubbled up. I want it higher. And the reason I put it on the vehicle on top of a spot, it's already going to be there anyhow, because it's readily available. Now, if you're doing an area where the paint will run, you want to put it on the vehicle, let it get so it's starting to dry up and get tacky. That way it won't run on you when you put it on the chip. But if you don't use the lacquer thinner, acetone may work. You can try it, but we've always used lacquer thinner. Now that looks pretty good right there. The rest we can wet sand out. But if you can feel it with your fingernail, it needs to have paint in it. Now as you're looking at this, you can see that the paint is a little bit higher. And that's what you want. Not too high. Here's what's going to happen. Once this dries, it will sand right out when you do your sanding. Because this fender's all got to be sanded. It's just the way it is. It'll sand right out of there. And as you're sanding, it will go flush to the original paint. That simple. But the key is getting that bond between the paint and the fender or paint in the hood or whatever it is you're doing it on. But you've got to let it dry a couple of days. All right, let's now deal with paint chips with rust in them. Oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong paint chip. This paint chip right here has rust in it and I'm gonna share with you how to get that out. All right, before we get that rust out of that chipped area, we have to build a few tools. You're going to need a paper punch. I like to use 1000 grit and I like to use 600 grit. 
You will need an X-Acto knife. All these tools will be in the show more of the video description. Buscar en el show more. Like that. That's my thousand grit, and I'll just do it with the thousand, but it's the same. You take a little bit of your super glue, and all you do is put a little dab right on the end, very little. And you can actually take that super glue, take your other eraser, touch it on that one, and it's more than enough glue. Place it on there, just like that. Let that set up. Now I've done three other ones that are ready to go. You'll need the blade here as well. Okay, right here is our chip. Right there, has rust in it. Now, if you're lucky enough and you can get the Duplicolor pens, on the end of them, they have a little stone right there. And you can actually go in there and scrape the rust out. And you can pick away the old paint that's on there. If you don't have that option, you just use your X-Acto knife and you pick out, you'll be able to see all the bubbled up paint where the rust has worked its way under the paint. Get that out of there. Pencil with your sandpaper on it. And you, what you're actually doing, if I can point this out to you, when you use the sandpaper on the end of the pencil, you're working the edge of the paint down here as well, making it a little bit flatter, blending it in just a little bit to the low spot. And the low spot is, I mean, this is, when you have rust, you're right to the metal. So there's no primer left there. And this that I'm going to share with you will last 15, 20 years. Not sure if that's long enough for you, but hopefully it is. Don't worry about the little scratches right in here, because that'll all buff out. Now you take your lacquer thinner, take your Q-tip, clean that area right up. And you'll be able to see if there's any other rust in there. That looks pretty good. I'm going to take my X-Acto on that area along the edges. It's like surgery. And if you scratch it, the metal up a little bit with the X-Acto, that's good. It'll help the uh, primer to bond. Now we're going to use a self-etching primer. This will just ensure that you don't have the rust come back. That's how you deal with a rust spot, but this will assure that that won't rust again on you. And you take your color paint and fill it in until it's just higher than this outside part of the body paint, okay? because you're going to then do the next step, which we're going to show you on the blue truck that we started with. It's all dried, been a couple of days. Now remember this, when you have chips that have rust in them, you have to use an etching primer if you have bare metal, once you get it to bare metal. You will not have rust if the primer is still there. If you're picking up what I'm laying down, none of these needed primer because we were not through the primer to the metal of the truck or if these are fiberglass or whatever they may be. You do not do anything on your vehicle until you've cleaned it with rubbing alcohol. Even if you've washed it, as I said. Now you can go back to the prior video because I'm just going to go through the steps here if you're seeing this video for the first time and didn't see the other one, I suggest highly you go and see that other video. Okay, now we're going to do our clay bar. I'm just going to focus here on these areas that we filled. Now we're going to go over these filled paint chips with a 2000 grit to start. 
If you've never done this before, I highly suggest starting out with a 3000 grit just to be safe because you don't want to go through the clear coat. It's kind of hard to do it on newer vehicles because they put so much clear on them. We've never had an issue with it. So you take your soapy water. Spray it up at the top and let it run down as you're doing it. Now I'm focusing on the area where I hit it. Now I barely can feel them already. And the only problem you will have with this, and I could have it too, is if your paint, the paint that you bought, doesn't match. I've had it happen. If you get lucky, you'll get one that matches perfectly, but we're going to see how this looks up, works out because this was a darker color. You gotta realize this. When your paint has so many scratches in it, like you've seen in the video, those microscopic scratches, it actually reflects light and makes the paint look lighter than it is. Once you get those scratches out, buff them out with your mother's or you have to end up wet sanding it and you buff it out like we did on the prior video, it will darken right down because all those scratches are gone. Then check it. Now you see that? You can barely see where any of those stone chips were at. And the cool part of it is, if you still have stone chips in your paint after you do this, you can do it again until you get them perfect. Look at that. You can't even tell where I filled the paint chips. One little spot I see there, but that's not bad. Now, let's zoom over here. This is one that didn't get sanded down. Let's do it and see what happens. As I said, you don't have to push real hard. I'm telling you, that looks beautiful. I'm telling you, it looks gorgeous. This is the easiest, simplest way to get rid of stone chips. Now look at that spot. Do you see it? You don't see it. I didn't sand any of that. I'm going to do that after the video and finish this fender all up so I'm done with it. Now we're going to buff this out and see how it looks. All right, guys and gals, I want to share this with you. I'm working on the other end of the fender so I can do the whole thing and be done with it. This is a chip that I did not completely sand down. I, have, I haven't finished it yet, and I wanted to stop. This is the paint that we put in two days ago, and this paint right here is higher than this paint here. And you can tell that because you sand a little and you wipe it down with your microfiber towels. You sand a little and you wipe it down. You keep doing it until you see these will all blend in to the perfect match of this paint if you got the right paint color. Now this darker ring around here is the original paint of the vehicle. Once I sand this down flush, this will come down to the height of this right here and that dark ring will be gone and it'll all look uniform. So what I'm going to do, finish this all out and then I'll set the buffer up and we'll buff this out and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, now every car from the factory, almost every one of them will have orange peel. And orange peel are these darker spots that you see. Just like that pit that I filled, these, this is your clear. It's not on smoothly, and so you get these little divots. It looks just like an orange peel. These little divots, as you're sanding this out, will come out. As you sand, you will get the clear flat, and these will all go away. All right, the orange peel is all off, and you can see where I had the stone chips were filled in this area. They're gone, and it looks blurry to you, but it's because there's a lot of light in here. And this is what I'm talking about with the scratches. That's why your paint looks lighter than it actually is. It's not that light. All right, we're getting ready to buff it all out, but I want to make something clear to everyone. Take care of your pads, your sandpaper, your buffing pads put everything in Ziploc bags. The reason I say that, because if you get a speck of dirt, a grain of sand on your sandpaper, it'll ruin everything that you're doing. The same with your buffers and your polishing pads. Protect it, because this is kind of like surgery. 
you just got to really watch over it and make sure you don't get any dirt on anything. Now we're going to use our mothers and another thing, remember, we will never share anything with you that doesn't work. Well, how can you use mothers on paint? We've done it for years and we get a better result with mothers metal and aluminum polish, mag and aluminum polish than we do anything else out there. So let's put it on and buff this thing out. The other video, I really implore you to watch the video. Look in the video description. You'll see the link for it. It is the prior video to this, and it's exactly what I'm doing right now. This way, you'll be able to make your paint look beautiful. Now, as you know, I went through and sanded this all down until I got all the orange peel out of it. You don't have to do that if you don't want to but I can't help myself, I've got to do it. So this paint is as flat as you could ever possibly get it. First off, I'm going to use my foam compounding pad. Now we'll put some more mothers on it and go to our wool compounding pad. And I'm pretty happy today. I got me some new uh, new pads like Christmas time around here. And you'll do the mothers as many times as it takes to get the minute scratches out from sanding. You could do it two or three times or it could be five or six times. Just depends on how nice you want it to be. The more you do this, the better it will shine when we get to the polishing part. Now it's time to wax. First one we're going to use as always is our mother's California Gold Carnuba. And then we'll follow that up with our Zymol. And this time on the Zymol, I am going to do the water mist on it and show you what it does. This is pretty much the best shine you can possibly get once we get done here. Pushing pad on. Nice and light, just take your time. Now I have the trigger wide open on this and it's at 1750 RPMs is the max on this buffer. It's an older one, but I'll tell you, I've had it for years and years, and I'm not going to get rid of it until it gets rid of me. But it does the job, and buy a good buffer. Don't go cheap. You'll regret it. All right, this is our Zymol. Again, all the tools will be in the show more of the video description. This is our bottle of water. I do it easy at first so we don't sling it all over the place. A little mist of water. This is how you make Zymol make your rig really shine. You can see the paint, how dark it is compared to what it looked like before. 
Before it was all light looking. But look at that, look at that light right there, the reflection in that. That's all you got to do. And there's not a stone chip that we felled showing. Gone. Good luck to you. Hope it works out. Take your time. Be patient. You're here with us. Come back again. Take care, ladies and gentlemen.